Hi guys, my name is Megan with the blog WilsonHomestead.com and today I want to teach you how to make a DIY dried orange slice garland for Christmas decorations. One of my favorite Christmas decorations are actually dried orange slices. I absolutely love the natural decorations. Bringing some of nature into your home according to the season and decorating with it is just so beautiful in kind of a minimalist understated way, which I absolutely love. I started making these the first year we were married. The very first Christmas we were married, I made some of these and put them on our tiny little tree. I think we had like a three foot tall tree in our little studio apartment. And I decorated it with orange slices and strings of popcorn. And it was very cute. And I still love to decorate with these every year. I actually love them so much that I leave them up year round. But again, I am also one of those people who drinks eggnog all year and listens to Christmas music all year, so it could just be that I love Christmas, but they are also just really pretty for any season in my opinion. So I tend to make these for our tree, and then when we're done with the tree, which is always very sad, I hate taking your tree down, I wish we could leave it up all year, but I will actually hang them somewhere on the wall. I have some hanging in our bathroom, I have some, some hanging in the archway between the kitchen and the living room. It's really fun to decorate in kind of a old-fashioned way, kind of what generations past would have where they wouldn't have just run to the store to buy anything from the latest trend and spend a ton of money. They would have decorated with more natural things that they had on hand that were easy to do and more affordable. So that's really what I aim for with decorating for Christmas. We really have no like conventional Christmas decorations. We get a live tree every year and I decorate with food basically. Orange slices, grapefruit slices, lemon slices, popcorn, cranberries, even dried apple slices would be really pretty. So that's just really the style I like and it's also, I just love that it's a lot more affordable and it's not cluttering up our house with, you know, Christmas stuff we have to store every year because they're pretty to leave out all year and even if you decide not to, they can still be composted. But anyway, let's get right into this tutorial. I wanted to mention real quick that I have a blog post that I will link down below that has a printable recipe card for this with all the instructions and you can print it out and have it for you so you can make these every year and you will never lose your recipe. But anyway, let's talk about what you'll need for this. I usually get about five to seven oranges depending on how long I want my string. Normally I will lean more towards getting more oranges just in case. And then I can always add them onto my stringers from last year or use them for something else. You need a sharp knife for slicing them, some jute twine or string or even wire to hang them on, and an awl or something like that to poke a hole in the middle because they don't always have a hole in the middle just depending on how the, the orange segments were when they grew or, you know, they might not have a hole. So I sometimes use a crochet hook if I can't find my husband's awl out in the workshop I normally can't find things out there unless I ask him. So the first step is to thinly slice your oranges. And I did pretty well on most of mine, but I got carried away with the last few. I just got so excited about it. And some of the last ones were pretty thick, but in general, you want to aim for them being pretty thin. You will have more of them, they'll dry faster. It'll just be, it'll just be better, trust me. So the next step, we are going to dry them. And now there's two methods that you can use for this, either a dehydrator or the oven. So let's go over the dehydrator instructions first. So after you slice all the oranges, you're going to just lay them out on the dehydrator trays. Stick the trays on the dehydrator and put the lid on and then you just turn it on. And now if you have a dehydrator like mine where it just has an on off button and no temperature controls, you just turn it on and don't worry about it. But if it has temperature controls, you set it to 135 degrees. That's what you want to dehydrate its citrus at. And then you start checking on the orange slices about two to three hours after you start it. That's when they might start getting dry depending on how thin you cut them. And I'm a little embarrassed to say this, but the ones that I cut really thick took more like 12 hours. And that is like so long. That's so long, but that's okay. They are dry now. <laughs> and also keep in mind that even if these don't get all the way dry, it's not the end of the world because we are one, not eating them. And two, they will be out on a stringer in the air, and so they'll dry, they can dry the rest of the way in the air. So if you're worried that there might be some moisture left in the middle, it's not as bad as if we were dehydrating these for like consumption. And then for the oven instructions, you're going to set your oven to the lowest temperature that it can go, which for mine is 170 degrees, just the lowest it can possibly go. And of course, since that is higher than what a dehydrator would normally be, they're going to dehydrate a little faster. Lay your oranges out on a cookie sheet and stick it in the oven. And now I recommend 
flipping the oranges once in between in like in the middle of dehydrating because the cookie sheet isn't breathable like dehydrator trays so they'll just dry more evenly and look the same on both sides it's not super important but if you think of it and have time I would recommend flipping them over once. So these, again, dry a little faster. So starting at around two hours, I'll keep checking on them and just seeing when they're looking really done. They can burn easier in the oven, so you do want to keep an eye on them more than in the dehydrator. You can, like in the dehydrator, you can seriously just forget about them for hours and that's not gonna be terrible. But in the oven, if you forget about them for hours, they might get brown, which unless, that's what you're going for, then you want to keep an eye on them. The next step is to take them out of the oven or dehydrator and you're going to poke a hole in the middle with either your awl or crochet hook or screwdriver, whatever you can find. We just need our hole big enough to thread our string or twine through it. Then next, once all the holes are poked through, we are going to thread our string through. Normally I use jute twine because it adds just kind of a rustic touch. I use jute twine for everything because I absolutely love it. But you could just get some regular kind of thicker cotton string. You could use pretty much any string. Just I wouldn't use thread because that's really thin. It can break easier. And if you don't have either of those, you can even use some tie wire. That'll just be a little stiffer, a little harder to bend, but that's okay. And then the last step is to just hang it up. You can wrap it around your Christmas tree and that'll look really pretty. Christmas tree if you already have decorations you can just hang it on the wall and it will add a really festive touch to your home you could hang it over the top of the window and have it draping along the side window trim and that I really love that look and what I like to do is actually arrange the orange slices after I get it hung because it's if you evenly space oranges and then you pick up the string to move it they'll like kind of slide down so I just get the string up at least most of the way up. And then I start arranging the oranges and I try to evenly space them so they look better. You don't want to have like a big clump of eight of them in one spot. And that is all there is to it. And now if you want to take these down after Christmas and then you can store them for next year. As long as you store them in something that's airtight normally, if I was gonna store something like this, I would put it in like a big glass gallon jar and then it'll be pretty in the jar and you can look at it. Or you can leave it up all year like I do. But no matter what you decide, I really hope that you enjoyed making some of these orange slices with me today and I hope that you decide to do it for your home. If you do it, be sure to tag me in a picture on Instagram because I would love to see how you guys arrange your orange slices in your home for Christmas. But again, don't forget to go check out the blog post. I will link it below and in the cards, but thank you for watching this video and I will see you in my next one. Bye!